If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. If you've played Popper, then you're probably familiar with this nifty little combo. Midnight Guard and Presence of God. Now let's start with you. Midnight Guard is a 2-3 two, for 2. What we care about here, though, is that whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your or your opponent's control, then you get to untap it. Now, perhaps in Limited you see this as a pseudo-vigilance effect, but what we care about is its interaction with Presence of God. So what this does is it just enchants a creature, Midnight Guard, and then taps it, or rather, yeah, you can use its ability to tap, and then create a 1-1 one, one Green Elf Warrior token. Now, of course, since a creature has entered the battlefield, it untaps Midnight Guard, and you see where this is going. Think Splinter Twin. That's basically what this is. Now, the main difference here is that with Splinter Twin, the creatures have haste, but get exiled at the end of turn. Oh, and their tokens as well, instead of being... Or, excuse me, their copies, rather than just mere tokens. But, in order to give our tokens haste, we have Elemental Mastery, which basically does the same thing. We put X11 red elemental creature tokens with haste into play, where X is that creature's power, but it doesn't really matter because Midnight Guard just makes essentially an infinite number anyway. So in either case, we can either pop them out without haste for 3 mana, or with haste for 4. And that's really awesome. This is a 4 of in the list. This is a 4 of in the list. I'm only running one Elemental Mastery. Even though it can certainly be a better card. And the reason for that is because... So in order to help find this combo, I have... For Heliod's Pilgrim, when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an Aura card, aka Presence of Gond, Elemental Mastery, or I have a couple utility picks later in the deck. And otherwise it's just a 1-2, so that's how we go and get our combo. This is what we're trying to assemble. Let's just make essentially an infinite number of creatures. I know we have to pick an arbitrarily high number, but let's say Graham's number, <laughs> a Googleplex, I don't know, whatever. And then we swing on the next turn, or the same turn, in the case of Mastery, and take them out that way. Now you'll notice that this isn't the fastest combo, so we are playing some ramp. We have four Noble Hierarchs, just Exalted and Taps for Colors, and Birds of Paradise. Now, Noble Hierarch won't tap for Elemental Mastery, Birds will, although we have lands to cover the mastery issue. And then to protect the combo, we have a one of spell skite. Because removal is a thing, and unfortunately, at least as far as I was able to find, uh, I could not see any modern legal auras that gave both flash and hexproof. And that's important because if we're trying to protect our midnight guard from incoming removal, lightning bolt, path to exile, dismember, well then, we do indeed need something that both has Flash to catch them off guard, because if we play the aura first, they just respond with removal, and has to give Hexproof, not Shroud, because if it gives Shroud, we can't use Presence of God or Elemental Mastery. If that ever gets made into a card, then it probably goes straight into the deck, although it would also probably be a fairly mana-intensive card. I would be surprised if it happened to be two or less. Now. This is essentially the combo shell. The actual combo itself goes to tutor the combo, ramps into the combo, protects the combo. Now that we have that, let's get to our utility picks and the deck's other angle. So firstly, we have a one of Eternal Witness. It just goes and gets us uh, our Midnight Guard or one of our auras if we happen to lose them to removal. We also have four Kasali Pride Mages. Now, yes, this is mainboard artifact and enchantment hate, and that in and of itself is awesome. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2, or it's potentially a 3-3 three, three for 2, and that's pretty sweet, but you'll notice now that we have eight sources of Exalted in the deck. Four Noble Hierarchs, four Kasali Pride Mages. 
And there's actually a reason for that. And that's because we protect ourselves and can also beat the opponent with ensnaring bridge. This is what distinguishes uh, my deck, I think, from other Midnight Presence or Midnight Gone or whatever the deck is called versions. That is to say, my deck runs in Snaring Bridge, and here's why. When we go off with our combo with Midnight Guard Presence or Midnight Elemental Mastery, our creatures are still 1-1s, one -ones, which means that once we've drawn our card for the turn, we can attack through our own Ensnaring Bridge with a Googleplex of creatures. Although, if we, for whatever reason, uh, cannot kill them, we can just make ourselves hellbent and keep playing off the top while the opponent can't attack us. I think that that's a really sick little uh, interaction. We can still win through our combo while keeping our opponent from being able to beat us. You'll also notice that we have two zero power, well, spell skites in here as well actually. We have three zero power creatures in the deck for a total of nine copies, four, four, and one. That's important because your zero power creature, creature excuse me, can of course attack with ensnaring bridge out. And Exalted triggers happen after they've already been declared as attackers, so Exalted will not keep them from attacking with Ensnaring Bridge. So the way that this works is, let's say I have Noble Hierarch, or more likely Birds of Paradise because of flying. I'll swing with my zero power creature, then Exalted will trigger, and now it's a 1-2. Ensnaring Bridge doesn't care that it's a 1-2 because it's already attacked. And so this helps you to, if you can't assemble the combo for whatever reason, still win the late game. You can still win by beating down with potentially, what, like a 3-4 Birds of Paradise in the air? It can happen. Now, Heliod's Pilgrim isn't just here for Presence of Gaunt and Elemental Mastery. We can also get one Chained to the Rocks, and we use this essentially just as tutorable removal. We do have Mountains in the deck, so this gives us the ability to hit our opponent's creature with a one-drop tutorable uh, kill spell, basically. And then here's something unusual, Aqueous Form. Now, Aqueous Form serves a number of roles. It actually needs to fulfill some pretty specific criteria here. It is a one-drop, that's not necessary, but it is awesome. It does not buff the power of the creature, which is great for Ensnaring Bridge, because we can put this on, say, a Noble Hierarch, and the Noble Hierarch will still be able to attack. It also can't be blocked, so if we do get into that late game state where for whatever reason we can't win with a combo, we can tutor up Aqueous Form, put it on one of our zero power creatures, and then just let them swing turn after turn after turn after turn. And in doing so, we kill the opponent by poking them to death, while not enabling them to do the same back to us because of Ensnaring Bridge. It also gives us Scry 1, that's nice, it can help to get us back in the game, yada yada yada. Um, we run only two paths to exile. I'm not sure what I would take out to put in more. Perhaps Kasali Pride Mage, but the reason that I'm running so many, I say so many, there are 22 creatures in the list. 4, 4, 4, 4, 1, 1, 4, so 22, is because we run Collected Company. This is another little innovation that I haven't seen out of Midnight Presence decks before. This enables us to, given the right cards, just straight up win on our opponent's turn. And the way that we go about doing this, well not win on our opponent's turn, but so it's the end of their turn, Collected Company goes and gets Midnight Guard, Heliod's Pilgrim, Heliod's Pilgrim gets Elemental Mastery, and Elemental Mastery because we already have four mana for Collected Company, so presumably we still have four mana for Mastery. Then on our turn, untap, play the Mastery, make infinite haste creatures, and then swing in for the kill, for the victory. So Collected Company gives us that. It also just lets us find, for instance, our opponent has played a removal spell, we need to get our spell sky, or this gives us the ability to end of turn get Eternal Witness to get it back so that we can try to go off again on the next turn, or if we need that instant speed artifact hate, uh, Kasali Pride Mage can come off of it. It's five mana, four plus one for the sacrifice. You get the idea. This is utility. And it also helps us to find some sideboard cards as well, which we'll get to in just a moment. For right now, though, the lands. So this is the main deck. 
There are 39 cards in it. And by the way, the deck list is in the description below, so check that out if you need any specifics. For the lands, we run four Temple Gardens. I'm not even going to put up overlays. I trust that you know what these are. There's a single Stomping Ground. Oh, by the way, Temple Garden, because our two dominant colors are green and white, obviously. There's a Stomping Ground so that we can get red. All of our lands, all of our fetch lands, go and get forest, so Stomping Ground makes sense. There's a one of Breeding Pool for Aqueous Form. And of course, I should note, Noble Hierarch will also tap for blue mana as well. And then we have a one of Sacred Foundry. And even though this isn't green, it still works with all of our fetch lands because of the specific suite of fetch lands that we do run. That is to say, we run four Windswept Heats and four Wooded Foothills. So, because they both get forest, and this one gets plains, this one gets mountains, it, either of them can go and get Sacred Foundry. And that's important, Sacred Foundry specifically, so that we can play the turn one Chain to the Rocks. It has to be a mountain and produce white mana if we're to go and do that. So that's why there's a one of Sacred Foundry. Now, with eight fetch lands, four of each of course, that gives us decent enough odds to find our red mana or our blue mana in the usually corner case, uh, case of our needing them. Blue mana we only need for aqueous form and paying for spell sky's ability. Uh, red mana we use for, uh, yes we use for elemental mastery, we also have some sideboard card, uh, four copies of, I'll get to it in just a second, <laughs> teasing you just a bit. We run two forest and a single plains, shout outs to dragon maze, dragon's maze, that is beautiful. Alright, and so that's the land package, save for, I am trying this out, maybe this isn't right because they come in tapped, but Stirring Wildwood. Because it's a 3-4 reach, this helps us to stop a lot of flyers in the format, it just gives us another creature to win the late game with, and with a lot of exalted triggers, that thing gets huge. Alright, so with our 3-4 Stirring Wildwood, so 21 lands, three of these by the way, I should note, Three Stirring Wildwoods. Now for the sideboard package. I am running four Ancient Grudges, so yeah, we could use that red mana. Oh yeah, just a lot of artifact removal in this deck. The four Kasali Pride Mages, four Ancient Grudges. You'll note that this deck doesn't look like it has a good match against Affinity. They can outrace the combo, they have removal anyway, and so that is something about which I worry very strongly. I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit. There's also a Fracturing Gust. Because we play these ramp creatures, we can actually get out the turn 3 Fracturing Gust, and that just wins the game for us. Uh, if it doesn't, that's crazy. They've like thought cast and a thought cast and a thought cast or something and gotten themselves back in. We have a one of Faith's Fetters. What on earth is this uh, draft common doing? Well, it does gain four life, that's whatever. It's an aura, so it can be found with Heliod's Pilgrim. Enchant permanent, but here's the part about which we care. The enchanted permanent's activated abilities can't be played unless they're mana abilities. And if that permanent is a creature, it can't attack or block. This hits creatures, and obviously it hits planeswalkers, right? It also hits lands, although it won't stop the mana ability. So, for example, Stirring Wildwood, not a creature anymore cannot become a creature. This is just tutorable utility removal, I guess you'd say. It's not truly removal, but it gets the job done. Uh, there are some matches where I'd want to bring that in. Control, for instance, generally speaking, I would like to bring that in. So, we have Core Firewalker as a two of, a little bit of burn hate, protection from red to stop their creatures, and kill all the creatures, Sands for, let's see, Monastery Swift Spear, Taylor Swift Spear, if she has prowess, uh, and gains a little bit of life. Two more past exile for decks that need cheap removal to be used against them. We're talking Zoo, we're talking Burn, we're talking Infect. You get the idea, very low to the ground decks. Want that removal? I'm running Two Rest in Peace for the Graveyard decks. Grishol Brand. Dredge is apparently a thing now, and I'm not just talking about my Army of the Dredge deck. I mean, there's a uh, Sultai Dredge list 
that's been running around and doing work. So, since Dredge is a thing, rest in peace. And also just fights Goy, fights Snapcaster, you get the idea. You may want to bring it in in those matches every now and then. Um, Jund, perhaps? One Thalia. A combo hate card. I only run one, it is legendary, and it does hurt us enough that I don't want to run too many copies. And we do have other combo hate. And we are ourselves a combo that can ramp out fairly quickly. So I don't think I need too many, but just a one of, just to try it out. Maybe there should be more. If you disagree with my only having one, please leave that in the comments. And lastly, we run two worships. So yes, our opponent can still kill us through worship. If they have wrath effects, if they have mill, if they have poison counters, there are a number of ways to win through worship anyway, but we have enough creatures and we are playing Collected Company. This just gives us the ability to say, oops, you don't win. Not necessarily, oops, I win. Oops, you don't win. At least not for that turn. It, if the opponent doesn't have wraths, then they need a lot of removal. We have to tax their removal uh, in order for them to win. And most decks just can't keep up unless they have that sort of mass removal. So that is the deck in its current form. I wonder what you all think of this. This is a deck that I've tried a different version of before, and the deck was not finished, and I did not pilot the deck as well as I should have. At the time, we didn't have Collected Company. I'm trying that out. I want to see if that gets the job done. I think that this deck has a lot of potential, but it's janky. It's super duper janky. <laughs> and it's not even that much of a budget deck, not in this current form. If you want to make it a budget deck, it's actually pretty simple. You take out the Aquas form, because you don't need blue anymore, so no breeding pool. You take out the Elemental Mastery, because you don't need red. And at that point, your lands can be, your fetch lands, if you have them, can be whatever. You can just make, uh, just take any suite of lands that will either generate Selesnia colors, or will go and find them, such as Windswept Heath, Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds. If you want to go budget, it depends on what your budget is, you can make this a budget deck primarily by going into two colors, is my point. Uh, you'll still want to play cards like Collected Company. It's going to rotate before too long, so wait for the price to drop. Ensnaring Bridge will no longer be a thing for you because that is expensive, and if that's the case, then that actually changes an awful lot about the deck on its own. You don't need to prioritize Exalted nearly as much as I have, because that's not a secondary win condition for you anymore. There are other Heliod's Pilgrim alternatives that you can try, uh, so that's another way that you can make it a budget deck. And that's pretty much it for me for now. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'd be happy to uh, give my thoughts and maybe make an updated version of the list if I feel that it warrants it. And lastly, if you want to have a deck list of your own feature on the channel, then feel free to donate to the Patreon. We have uh, different incentive uh, levels. If you give to a certain amount, I'll make a deck, just any deck, based on a card. Uh, and we'll play some matches with it. Alternatively, you can have an entire deck submitted and I'll play matches with that. I don't care if the deck is 60 Shadowborn Apostles. Some, some viewer might care, but you get the idea. Whatever the case may be, I will make it work. All right. Take care, Magic Community on YouTube, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.